Hello Giants fans, welcome to Giants Baseball 101, I'm Gabe Vaughn, your host. The Giants beat the Phillies 4-3 to today, they were able to get the bat on the ball today when it mattered, when they were runners on base, didn't strand them, turned it all into four runs, and the bullpen too, it was just a major key to the victory today because the bullpen has just been an element of the roster. It's really been lagging behind in terms of quality, and they, they really picked it up today. Alex Cobb lasts only three and two-thirds innings, so he, he wasn't able to go too deep today, but Gabe Kapler obviously somehow trusted the bullpen today in, in removing Cobb early and just going evidently with the most favorable matchups that he could muster up. But everybody really pitched pretty well today. Taylor Rogers has scored the inning, and John Brebbia, from his disastrous performance this year, he rebounded for today, going one and two-thirds innings. And Tyler Rogers, I mean, you just have to say with him, I mean, prior to this, he had three losses this year, which I'll just say that the loss for relief pitchers and only relievers is, or at least can be, an important statistic. And I'd like to see how many they've got. And Rogers ERA this year, it's been low, but I still think prior to this point, you know, if, 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 if a guy's, in short, if a guy's losing games, it's not contributing enough to, to actually winning games, then he's probably not... You know, and I think especially with relievers, that's where you have to be a little wary of the ERA statistic because when do they allow hits? Do they allow hits with runners in scoring position? You kind of got to look at a lot more, I think. So that was my main concern with with Rogers and, and why I haven't really trusted him like his ERA might have indicated. But he was... Very effective today. In the seventh inning, he was in that real tight spot with, I believe it was runners on first and second with nobody out, but he rallied and he, he got that double play and got through that inning, got through the eighth. So great job done by Tyler Rogers today. Just, I mean, that, that was great. It's, it's just the best thing you can get in a situation like... He was facing in the eighth, that double play. Then Camilo Doval, he allowed that home run to Kyle Schwarber with two outs, but the game within one run, but he struck out the next hitter to end the game. So on, on both sides of the coin, offense and defense, I think the key today was clutch performance for the Giants. And, and that's what that that's really, I think, what's gonna decide a lot of their their future this year, whether they can whether they can perform well in clutch situations. This kind of applies equally to pitching and hitting. It, it, it could really be what decides whether they get into the playoffs or not. And, of course, that's one of the most controversial topics in baseball. And we really can't measure it, considering that analysts can't even define what a clutch situation is. I mean, they, they can't, I'm being serious with you here, analysts cannot define this basic element of it. I've, I've done a lot of reading, and they just, they, they really can't figure that out. But when you're dealing with something that's going to make or break your team's season, like it is with the Giants, I think at least from a fan's perspective, we're not about to say that's going to be left up to random chance. I, I'm, I, I'm not for saying that at all when we're dealing with something important enough to make or break the Giants' season. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not wanting to be irrational here or anything any more than anyone else would. But the but the, the Giants they won today and yesterday against the Phillies. Before that, they were losing, and it's 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 just a, a seesaw and all that. But I, I think when they're good, they're good for a reason. That's why I'm saying right now they they got to stay good. And I, I do think, I'll just interject here, 
I am predicting the Giants will take this series against the Phillies. I, I believe it's four game. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm just getting mixed up, but I, I think it's a four game series. Um, I do think there's probably a reasonable probability of a sweep. I, I, I wouldn't, I know I've told you this before and it hasn't come to fruition, so I wouldn't really get your hopes up, you know. I mean, the last thing about a clutch performance, you, you know, clutch performance metrics in terms of, of hitting and pitching, the last thing I will say is that what you could notice is that maybe it those situations bring out bring out the best in the best players and maybe the worst in the worst players where it's it's not so much like like you've got players who that's their special ability as it is that the good players are going to be the best clutch players because those situations somehow the pressure it just brings out the best that they've got and the opposite is true for the players who maybe aren't performing well and then at, at the you know kind of mediocre average level it just kind of cancels itself out if, if you look at it that way I mean that, that could be the best way to understand the whole clutch performance question and, and, and maybe too that it, it's what you'd say for for the Giants as long as we see it kind of consistently play out that way obviously the, the best pitchers that we've seen for them this year they're the ones we want to have on the mound in situations with with runners on base, but I mean, I'm I'm still gonna evaluate. I think in particular the bullpen based on what they do in the most important situation with runners on base. I I, I think to me that there's just no real stronger way that you can evaluate a bullpen. I, I mean, oftentimes this is true, and that's just the way it's got to be improved upon from. 2022 when they were kind of they were just allowing big hits with runners in scoring position and, and doing that against the Dodgers their division rivals it, it's it's not and the interesting thing is that last year we knew from very early in the season that there was virtually no chance the Giants were going to overtake that the Dodgers in the division that's the sharp contrast to 2021 when they it was a battle all the way through and the Giants took the division at the last game although they ended up losing the division series. But in 2022, Giants knew they were out of the division race, but games against the Dodgers, they were just like games against any other team in terms of standings and the Dodgers being a great team and all that. That That's why when, when these things that I'm, I'm talking about now, when they went wrong for the Giants in 2022, that, that's still, it, it's what killed them. And now it's it's where, where we got to see things looking better, and they are hanging in there, they're surviving, and while I'm disappointed with their failure to tie their record at this point, I, I thought that a few weeks ago, I thought a few weeks ago that, that this accomplishment could have been, that this could have been accomplished much sooner, but that, you know, they kind of keep losing the ground that they make up and all that, but still, I think they're hanging in there, and it, it does it definitely does look like it's going to be a winning week this time, and I, I can just about guarantee that. And hopefully it will be a sweep in this series against the Phillies. The Giants just need to get themselves back into this. And, and there is, like, plenty of time, too. I, I just think that once we get into July, it's, it's going to become... It, it's I don't want to exaggerate here, but it might be where performance, like, kind of... It's going to double in importance specifically as we were leading up to the trade deadline. And even if we believe, I've just got to be honest here because the front office, that they're making the decisions, not us. And sometimes they don't make very good decisions. Even if we would go into this believing that the best thing for the Giants to do was to, to buy at the deadline and, and to make a playoff run. If the front office... If Farhan anxiety and his executives, if, if they're not going to think that up front, then you would see how a, a mediocre to bad performance in the couple of weeks leading up to the trade deadline, it, it could ruin the Giants' playoff chances just because the front office decides not to add to it, even if it might not have been crippling if they had added to it, which is what I believe they should do even if the Giants kind of continue to 
to hover around mediocrity like they are right now. It, it's how it's going to influence those in the decision making roles is another, you know, kind of real key thing. And, and, and obviously team motivation and all that, which we, we can really talk about that from a more immediate perspective. Hopefully that's just been hyped up a lot over these, these past couple of days here and that the Giants can, you know, win this series as well as the next one this week and, and really get back into this soon. Thank you for watching. This has been Giants Baseball 101. Please subscribe if you haven't. Also, please leave your questions and comments. You know where to do it. I'll see you next time on Giants Baseball 101.